What's up, nerd and nerdettes? It's time for a superpower shorty. This superpower is a splinter off the branch of Earth manipulation. So sit down and get set for sand manipulation. With the ability to turn any day into a beach day, while at the same time ruining the insides of bags and cars, users of simulkinesis can create, shape, and manipulate sand. A naturally occurring, loose, fragmented, or granular sedimentary material composed of finely divided rock and mineral particles ranging in diameter from 0.0625 millimeters to 2 millimeters. Hmm. The most common sand is composed of quartz particles, which are mostly colorless or slightly pink color, and feldspar, which is mostly a pink or amber color. There also exists black sand, such as those found in Hawaii, which are composed of particles of obsidian formed by volcanic activity, aka volcano sand, and numerous others that have names that I'm not going to even try to pronounce. I don't want you guys laughing at me. While lighter color sand, such as white or gray, usually come from coral light materials or sand comprised of broken shell fragments, usually light brown in color as well. It's not a stretch to say that this element is a very common object to find, and as such, it isn't viewed as such a rare-ish power. Sand exists everywhere, even in places you don't want it, but like all things on Earth, it has its uses that we humans have more than exploited. I found out that besides water and air, Sand is our most naturally used resource. No, I'm not even joking. We use it more than oil. Here I am getting the easy one out of the way. I'm gonna just throw glass on the table. We all know that heat, sand, and pressure makes glass. But did you know that we also use sand in cosmetics, paper, paint, building materials, and numerous other objects? How's it done? <laughs> don't ask me, I don't know. Maybe it has something to do with the ultimate level of pliability that sand has. Maybe it's the nature of the silica compounds that make up the element. You know, it helps make things thicker. It's a bonding agent in some cases. Or maybe it's the nearly nano-like size and structure. Like all things, I'll leave it up for you guys to decide and make your own conclusion. Just like I hope you'll come to your own conclusion and decide that it's better to hit that like and subscribe button than try to brave the desert. But if you're ready to take your chance and get snatched up by the mummy, then do others a favor and hit that share button so people will at least know where not to step. Or where to step. Quicksand is a pain in the hoo -hoo. The first thing that people think about when it comes to sand is either the beach or the desert. And I, uh, oh crap, I forgot where I was going with that. Okay, okay, let's try it again. The ironic thing about sand is that it's something that we view in the extreme. Yeah, I'm serious. When it comes to this element, we view it through the metaphorical lens of either being a beach day or a desert. Take from that what you will. It's obvious from that choice which one is more preferred than the other. But if you think about both examples, they just show sand looking the same, doing the same thing, and reacting the same way it always has, will, and will continue to. So yes, while sand is a shifting mass of grain-like particles or materials, it's still consistent in the most metal way possible, in the sense that you know what you're going to get when it comes to this element and this ability. The inconsistent thing is what surrounds or interacts with the sand. You guys want an example? Look at mummification. Our ancient ancestors, but for the sake of this video, I'm gonna say the Egyptians and the Greeks, both used the moisture absorbing properties of sand and other granular light materials like salt and spices, most of them silica based, to help sterilize, preserve bodies so they could be buried later on. But also used the substance as a form of defense, rigging catacombs and tombs alike. Sand didn't change its form for their use, but it did affect what it was around in order to be used. Another example, something more relative okay cool let's look at hourglass timers which are tools filled with the granular material mainly sand and the movement of the sand which can be used to tell the passage of time the funny thing about this like mentioned earlier the sand doesn't change form it just merely shifts or is moved through an outside force and it's that combination of forces along with the sand allows us to tell how much time has passed this ties into the fantastical themes that portray magic or sand light materials of a paranormal influence of some sort. Just like I mentioned in my video on dust manipulation, check that out, the link is in the description. The concept itself is used as a symbolic medium or carrier to represent the unexplainable thing being performed. That's why legend and myth had stories of a being called the Sandman, who was known for bringing good dreams by sprinkling sand onto a person's eyes when they're sleeping, which explains the morning eye crust that everybody wakes up with. Well, that's what I was told as a kid. The sand, again, is used by this being as a vector and or medium to allow him to manipulate dreams. And what happens to the sand? 
It doesn't change shape or form, it just shifts positions while everything else around it changes, such as the dreams in the individual. <laughs> Even the Sandman himself is changing. But then again, I might be looking into this too much. Anyway, if you can remember all that info Shay just spat out, then you'll definitely see the similarities between this power and its parent power, Earth Manipulation. So, if you want more applications or even more info on this power's cultural or symbolic meanings, check out my video on that. You'll get to hear my self-analysis of what the power really means, and via that, you can see how this power connects to its element, its concept, and everything else around it. The link is in the description. Now, despite it being a branch off of Earth manipulation, this is still its own unique ability with its own equally unique themes. So, let's see where we go with this. With the power to manipulate sand comes the natural ability to attack with, defend with, and control sand with sand attacks. The user can control an outside object in a push or pull manner using sand with Samo telekinesis. Samo meaning sand. They'll be able to generate their own source of sand completely separate from outside sources with sand generation. Oh my God. God, this alliteration is kicking my... And since they can generate it freely, why shouldn't they be able to stick it together in order to give it a measure of density? With sand solidification. One would then be able to take that ability and give the newly solidified sand a definite shape, whether it's simple or complex, with samokinetic constructs. And if you're the source of the element, generating and shaping it as you please, then the reverse should also be within the realm of possibilities, allowing you to absorb sand with sand absorption. And since you're absorbing it safely, it would be pretty hard to believe that the element wouldn't have a positive effect on your body, giving you a samokinetically enhanced condition, basically using sand to make you stronger. You can give the life energy your body naturally possesses the properties of sand with sand aura or this can take the form of giving your physical form the properties of sand with sand mimicry with this level of mastery over your physical form the next step is to transfer that power outward transforming whatever you desire into silica based particles with sand transmutation but if that process is too fast for ya you y'all's is then you can get some up close and personal time with your target by infusing sand into whatever combative capabilities you possess with samokinetic combat. Well, what if you feel like a pharaoh and you don't want those lowly and sandless peasants touching you and uh, <laughs> dirtying up your sand? <laughs> so stupid. Then keep your distance and propel yourself on land or through the air via samokinetic flight. But if you really want to flex on someone, then combine your ability to change your physical form with your ability to shift your physical form from one location to the next through the exclusive use of sand, and maybe a little bit of dust, via Samo Portation. And users tripping on their own power and status can propel massive amounts of sand, dust, air, and whatever they pick up and send it towards their unfortunate target via Sandstorm creation at this point you're, you're basically the mummy well, you're basically the mummy so let's just add desert adaptation because of your bodily affinity to the element and let's also add desert manipulation this one's pretty straightforward no need to insult you guys' intelligence but that's definitely not all i got you guys i got you guys here's two additional powers that have to do with the esoteric properties that i mentioned earlier that have to do with sand i mean we are talking about sand these next powers will fall under a variation of sand magic, so we'll just slap that label on there right now. Now, if the user is an entity comparable in power to the mythical Sandman, then it's not far-fetched to say that they can stretch their abilities to affect sleeping targets and manipulate dreams through the medium of sand with sleep dust manipulation. But, 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 there are other esoteric themes that encompass this power sphere as well. Remember the hourglass I mentioned earlier? Or how sand can be compared symbolically with life and death? Well, what do life and death and an hourglass have in common? Even if it can be viewed as a loose comparison. 
I don't want to wait for you guys. Ding, ding, ding. I'm talking about time. The big boy power of all powers. So, long story short, esoteric-based sand powers can allow you to control the flow of time on a limited scale with sands of time manipulation. Extremely overpowered. And there you have it, sand manipulation, in a nutshell. This power got pretty overpowered pretty dang quick. <laughs> but it makes sense to me. It should to you guys as well. The element is everywhere, so we gotta find some use for it. But anyway, this power shares a lot of the same weaknesses that Earth does, such as water and air. Not so much fire, because the process will create something awfully purdy. But unlike Earth, it doesn't share the same level of durability or defense. It does have a higher level speed rating than Earth, and just as much utility, relatively speaking. 